Hi, I'm Estelle Trengove, and this is my second set of lecture notes for LN1000 Electric Circuits at Wits University. In this lecture, I'm going to introduce dependent sources. You'll remember that in the previous set of lecture notes, we looked at in ideal independent sources, so this time we'll look at dependent sources, and then I'll also look at some more common terminology. I'll look at how we define branches, nodes, loops, and meshes, and also at how we define series and parallel connections. With a dependent source, the terminal voltage or current depends on another voltage or current in, in the circuit. So this allows us to model some practical engineering devices like, for example, amplifiers. You've hopefully all been in the lab where you're building your audio amplifier and you know that if we have an amplifier and we have some particular input voltage, V in, then the amplifier amplifies it to a higher voltage, V out. And we can represent this amplifier, you, and we'll see this in much more detail later on, but we can represent it as a resistor, and we have an input voltage across that resistor. And then we have a circuit with a dependent voltage source. And that voltage, the dependent of the voltage of that dependent voltage source is dependent on the input. So it's some factor A times V in, and that gives us our output voltage. And so we're going to see these kinds of symbols because this is the symbol for a dependent voltage source. So let's look first at some dependent voltage sources and these are of course ideal dependent voltage sources and the first kind of ideal dependent voltage source that we're going to look at is a voltage controlled voltage source. So somewhere in our circuit we've got a voltage which we'll call V1 and then there's some other stuff happening in the circuit and somewhere else in the circuit there's a voltage controlled voltage source or a voltage dependent voltage source and this is the symbol we use for it and there's some scaling factor times the voltage which is controlling this voltage source which in this case is V1 so this is a voltage controlled voltage source. It depends on a voltage somewhere else in the circuit. We can also get a current controlled voltage source. So we have a current flowing somewhere in our circuit and the circuit there's all sorts of other circuit stuff. We'll call that current I2 and then somewhere further on, we've got a voltage source that depends on that current. So this voltage is a I2. And you can see then in these two cases that for the voltage controlled voltage source, we can see that this factor, the scaling factor A, must be dimensionless. Because, of course, the, the voltage of the voltage-controlled voltage source must still be a voltage. 
In this case, though, the scaling factor A has a dimension of ohms because we want the this whole amount to be a voltage, so we need to multiply the current with ohms in order to get a voltage in this ideal dependent voltage source. We also get ideal dependent current sources and similarly to the ideal dependent voltage sources we can have a voltage somewhere in the circuit. So let's call this voltage V3 and then there's some other current stuff and voltage, some other circuit stuff happening. And here we have a dependent current source and it depends on that voltage V3. A, V3. So we can see that in this case, the scaling factor A has to have a dimension which is the inverse of resistance, and we call that conductance, and it's measured in ohms to the minus 1, which is also called Siemens. And we need that so that this here can be a current. We can also get a current-dependent current source. So if we have a current flowing somewhere in the circuit, which we'll call I4, then we've got some circuit stuff happening. And then we have a current source which depends on that current I4 with a scaling factor. And we can see that in this case, the scaling factor again is dimensionless. Because we need the current flowing in that current source to be measured in amps, because it is a current after all. And now I'm going to deal with some more terminology. And the first terminology is a branch. A branch contains a single circuit element. So a branch is basically a, sing a single circuit element. So in this case, we can see that the circuit has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six branches and n take note that this piece of the circuit is not a branch because it doesn't com contain an element so that is not a branch and it's just a piece that's drawn in there um, for convenience to make the circuit look nicer. So similarly, this is not a branch. And this is a branch. A node is a point where two or more branches are connected. So a node is a point where some elements are connected to each other. And sometimes we draw a node as an expanded node. So in this case, it's easy to see that this point over here is a node, which we'll call node 1. And then over here, this is an expanded node. So this just counts as one single node, which we'll call node 2. And this also is an expanded node, which we'll call node 3. And this is an expanded node that we'll call node 4. So in fact, this circuit has four nodes. Um,
And if we, if we draw the expanded nodes as a single node, then it's easy to see that it has four nodes. But we draw in the expanded nodes so that our drawing is easier to understand and looks much neater. If we didn't put in the expanded node, our circuit would look something like this. We'd have the 10 milliamp source and connected to it is this resistor, the 2K resistor, and then we'd have the, the 1K and the voltage source. And then we'd have the 10 kilo ohm resistor and we'd have the 5 kilo ohm resistor and that is connected over here and if we draw the circuit like this you can see that it looks much untidier and much more difficult to understand but then it's easy to see that the circuit only has four nodes. One, two, three, four. The same four nodes that are on our much neater other drawing. That brings me to the concept of loops and meshes. A loop is any closed path in a circuit and a mesh is a loop that does not contain any other loops. So if we just look at meshes first, you can see there's a closed path over here and a closed path over here and a closed path over here. And those are our three, mesh, the, our three meshes. So this circuit has three meshes. And now let's count the number of loops. And obviously each of the meshes is also a loop because it's also a closed path in the circuit. So we already have three loops. But then this is also a loop because it's also a closed path in the circuit. And this is also a loop. And then lastly... This is also a loop right around the outside edge of the circuit. So, in fact, in this circuit, there are three meshes and six loops. The concept of nodes leads us to our definition of what constitutes a series and a parallel connection. So two elements are in series if there is one node that they and only they share. So if you look at this circuit, you can see that this node over here um, is a node that is only shared by the 6-volt source and the 1 kilo ohm resistor. And so it means that these two elements are in series. So this is a series connection. A parallel connection, two elements are connected in parallel if they are connected to the same two nodes. And we can have any number of elements sharing the same two nodes. So you can see, remember that this is one expanded node, so this is one node and this is another node, and so we can see that these two elements, the 10 milliamp source and the 2 kilo ohm resistor, are connected in parallel. So this is a parallel connection. 
Um, and if we use that definition, you can also see that over here, this node and this node connects the 10 kilo ohm resistor to this to the 6 volt source and the 1 kilo ohm resistor so in fact we can also say that we've got 1 kilo ohm in series with a 6 volt source all in parallel with a 10 kilo ohm resistor and that brings me to the end of this lecture. Goodbye.